I want to welcome you to another class of the video series at the RedoxDoc.com. The topic today is traumatic brain injury. My name is Dr. Ward. Many people are quite interested in the issue of traumatic brain injury, especially in light of the fact that we have uh, tens of thousands of veterans that are returning from a war who have experienced traumatic brain injury from um, explosive devices that have either blown up their vehicles or or parts of them. And because of advanced medical uh, technology, they have survived um, and are now contending with the issues related to the trauma to their brain. Their bodies are more apt to recover, but our brain cells are unique and special, and they oftentimes are um, very much affected. So I thought I'd spend a little time today talking about this topic because it's important and explain to you how redox chemistry is intimately involved in the healing process and recovery process in TBI, what traumatic brain injury is abbreviated as. So what is it really? It's a, an external mechanical force that causes brain dysfunction. So it could be anything from a concussion to an explosion or a motor vehicle accident where the head gets bounced around. So one of the ways to visualize this is to think of your brain as um, an object inside of your skull and it's floating in some liquid. And so as your head is stopped, the brain is still moving inside the, the skull itself because it's in liquid and it bangs against the skull on the inside and bounces back against the other side. That is in medical terms called coup and contra coup. Both of those are sometimes quite devastating. Not to mention just the concussive expl uh, from an explosion um, just literally rattles those cells and traumatizes them uh, dramatically. The symptoms of TBI include loss of consciousness, dizziness, and cognitive dysfunction that affects memory, our uh, mood, and the ability to concentrate. People have short-term memory loss. Uh, it's quite dramatic. Um, they have uh, problems with mood where there's sort of like a trigger that gets pulled and they go from one mood to the other mood in seconds. And the inability to stay focused on a topic and concentrate. So how is this diagnosed? Usually um, a CT scan will show some bleeding or bruising of the brain tissue um, and cognitive measurements and clinical findings usually are co correlate with that. There are cases of, of traumatic brain injury where there isn't any bleeding on a CT scan. Um, they tend to be more mild, but usually there's been some bruising. Just like if you hit yourself, there's a bruise there. The brain does the same thing. Um, treatment for TBI um, traditionally involves the use of medicines to help people function. Um, if they're not sleeping, if they're having trouble with mood, various medicines are used to support their ability to function and, and live life. Um, occupational therapy and physical therapy may be needed where there are physical impairments or uh, profound learning impairments where they've forgotten how to do certain things, kind of like with a, um, a stroke. This is not a stroke, but it's similar in some cases where the cells are so like beat up that they don't even do their work. They can't send messages and so forth. And then lastly, counseling is critical because people get quite despondent and depressed and lose hope. And, and the recovery process is not fast because brain cells heal slowly. And so people need a lot of support. What are the outcomes? Right now, um, with Iraq war veterans, the outcomes are very poor. And I'll explain why in a minute. They're not good. And people uh, are quite frustrated. But um, they are quite variable. It's interesting, the research is showing that um, people respond to treatment and respond to, to TBI injuries very, very differently. So what could account for the variability? The science seems to point to um, some critical features that are revolving around our ability to heal. And so let's talk about the science of healing from TBI um, and our brain cells, how our brain cells heal and look at some uh, research study that was done um, a, a little bit ago and explain to you some of the interesting findings. So the recovery process is linked to cellular redox potential. 
The health of our cells is connected to the redox potential. What is redox potential? It is the capacity for our cells to produce and utilize redox molecules that are normally produced and represent the first um, line of defense in healing. They represent the, the critical molecules that provide energy to the cell and um, provide molecules of communication to do the healing work with. So that potential is um, um, linked to uh, the amount of oxidative stress that might be going on. Um, so, <clears throat> and, and just to back up a second, the healing process involves not just fixing some cells. Yeah, that's important. The cell has to be able to work. A brain cell's job is to transmit information. That's its job. After a TBI, the brain cell is just sitting there. It looks pretty. It's alive. Because if it was dead, we'd have a stroke or something, right? So it's alive, but it's just not doing its work. And so that work depends on its ability to utilize nutrition, man, um, utilize oxygen, and to get rid of waste products, all the basic cell functions that we think of. Um, the healing process also involves restoring the neurotransmitter balances and the pathways of thinking and mood. So let's talk about um, what this redox potential has to do with individuals. Some people have more oxidative stress going on in their brain than another. They might be 30 years old and um, there's going to be more oxidative stress. Why? Some of it's related to nutrition. People that don't eat a balanced nutrition uh, with lots of vegetables and fruits, uh, plenty of water and things like that, have more oxidative stress in their body and in their brain. People who smoke cigarettes have a tremendous more amount of oxidative stress. And um, the brain gets 20% of our, of our blood supply circulation, yet is only about 2% of our body weight. All of that blood supply is carrying carbon monoxide and the pollutants of tobacco to the brain, and it creates more oxidative stress. So there's free radicals and toxins, and the body has to deal with that. And so if your, redox, if your oxidative stress uh, is higher, your repair potential is poorer. And that makes you more at risk for a slow and arduous or a terrible recovery process with a traumatic brain injury. So animal studies have shown that the total tissue antioxidant capacity is, um, is dramatically linked to oxidative stress. So our capacity to, to contend with oxidative stress is linked to how many antioxidants we have and how well they can do their work. The low molecular weight antioxidants uh, were studied in, in this particular animal study. And uh, it's at the end of the uh, video. You can see the actual study if you want to go look it up. But the antioxidants in these animals, their effectiveness was linked to the ability to have redox resources, molecular resources, for the antioxidants to actually do their work. So antioxidants, think of it like this. They're like a, um, somebody who's uh, trying to grab a hold of damaging chemicals, a free radical chemical, an antioxidant, excuse me, uh, a toxin. And in one hand, I'm going to grab a hold of one of those bad things. In the other hand, I've got to grab a molecule that will neutralize it of an opposite charge. And what, what antioxidants use are redox molecules. They're of an opposite charge. They bring them together. It neutralizes it. It's a harmless waste product. So um, our ability to do repair work is linked to how many antioxidants we have and redox resources that they have to work with to contend and, and deal with the repair work. And so um, just from a practical standpoint, I would like to suggest a few things. Uh, if you happen to know somebody who's dealing with traumatic brain injury, um, make sure that they're working with a, a very skilled health professional because it's a serious uh, process that needs a lot of work. Um, but I would caution you to avoid benzodiazepine drugs and opiate drugs. 
Those medicines are oftentimes used to treat symptoms, but they delay the recovery process because these drugs will hijack the brain from its normal pathways. And um, there's another video on addiction. Um, these, these medicines are, are problematic in traumatic brain injury. And um, it, it is, we're not sure why they slow down the recovery process, but they can. Um, so this is a triad of traumatic brain injury, addiction, and pain. These are, these are real problems that um, veterans are dealing with, and uh, it's a complex one. And we, we, we don't have all the answers yet, but I do know that these medicines, although they have some therapy value, can delay the recovery process. Next, um, supplement with redox molecules. You've seen where all these places where um, the recovery of the cells their neurotransmitter balance and the pathways of thinking are facilitated by the, the redox molecule messenger cells. Exercise is really helpful in, in dealing with traumatic brain injury. It turns on a lot of our adaptogenic genes and that accelerates healing. We have genetic direction in our body that activates healing or turns it off. And so exercise has a way of turning it on. And then to stick with a plant-based diet that has nutrients that will help to upregulate our own production of antioxidants, and it helps us use our redox resources. So a diet that's about 80% vegetables and fruit and 20% everything else really does work. I hope that's been helpful. I've enjoyed being with you, and we'll see you at the next class.